Chapter 19, The Prophet Shipmates, have you shipped in that ship? Queequeg and I had just left the Piquad and were sauntering away from the water, for the moment each occupied with his own thoughts when the above words were put to us by a stranger, who, pausing before us, leveled his massive forefinger at the vessel in question. He was but shabbily apparelled in faded jacket and patched trousers, a rag of a handkerchief investing his neck. A confluent smallpox had in all directions flowed over his face and left it like the complicated ribbed bed of a torrent when the rushing waters have been dried up. "'Have you shipped in her?' he repeated. "'You mean the ship Pequod, I suppose,' said I, trying to gain a little more time for an uninterrupted look at him. "'Aye, the Pequod, that ship there,' he said, drawing back his whole arm and then rapidly shoving it straight out from him with the fixed bayonet of his pointed finger darted full at the object. Yes, said I, we have just signed the articles. Anything down there about your souls? About what? Oh, perhaps you haven't got any, he said quickly. No matter, though, I know many chaps that haven't got any. Good luck to them, and they are all the better off for it. A soul's a sort of fifth wheel to a wagon. What are you jabbering about, shipmate, said I. He's got enough, though, to make up for all the deficiencies of that sort of the other chaps, abruptly, said the stranger, placing a nervous emphasis upon the word he. Queequeg, said I, let's go. This fellow has broken loose from somewhere. He's talking about something and somebody we don't know. Stop, cried the stranger. Ye said true. Ye haven't seen old thunder yet, have ye? Who's old thunder, said I, again riveted with the insane earnestness of his manner. Captain Ahab. What, the captain of our ship, the Pequod? Aye, some of us old sailor chaps, he goes by that name. Ye haven't seen him yet, have ye? No, we haven't. He's sick, they say, but he's getting better, and we'll be all right before long. All right again before long, laughed the stranger with a solemn, derisive sort of laugh. Look ye, when Captain Ahab is all right, then this left arm of mine'll be all right, not before. What do you know about him? What did they tell you about him? Say that. They didn't tell much anything about him, only I've heard he's a good whale hunter and a good captain to his crew. That's true, that's true, yes, both true enough. But you must jump when he gives an order. Step and growl, growl and go. That's the word with Captain Ahab. But nothing about that thing that happened to him off Cape Horn long ago when he lay like dead for three days and nights? Nothing about that deadly scrimmage with the Spaniard before the altar in Santa? Heard nothing about that, eh? Nothing about the silver calabash he spat into? And nothing about his losing his leg last voyage, according to the prophecy. Didn't you hear a word about them matters and something more, eh? No, I don't think you did. How could you? Who knows it? Not all Nantucket, I guess. But how's ever, mayhaps, you've heard about the leg, and how he lost it. Ah, you heard of that, I dare say. Oh, yes, that everyone knows the most. I mean, they know he's only one leg, and that a parmacetti took the other off. My friend, said I, what all this gibberish of yours is about, I don't know, and I don't much care. For it seems to me that you must be a little damaged in the head. But if you're speaking of Captain Ahab, of that ship there, the Pequod, then let me tell you that I know all about the loss of his leg. All about it, eh? Sure you do? All? Pretty sure. With finger pointed and eye leveled at the Pequod, the beggar-like stranger stood a moment, as if in a troubled reverie, then starting a little, turned and said, You've shipped, have ya? Names down in the papers? Well, well, what's signed is signed, and what's to be will be. And then again, perhaps it won't be after all. Anyhow, it's all fixed and arranged already, and some sailors or others must go with him, I suppose, as well these as any other men, God pity em. Mornin' to you, shipmates, mornin'. The ineffable heavens bless ya. I'm sorry I stopped ya. Look here, friend, said I. If you have anything important to tell us, out with it. But if you're only trying to bamboozle us, you are mistaken in your game. That's all I have to say. And it's said very well, and I like to hear chap talk up that way. You're just the man for him, the likes of ya. Mornin' to you, shipmates, mornin'. Oh, when you get there, tell him I've concluded not to make one of them. Ah, my dear fellow, you can't fool us that way. You can't fool us. It's the easiest thing in the world for a man to look as if he had a great secret in him. Mornin' to you, shipmates, mornin'. Morning it is, said I. Come along, Queequeg, let us leave this crazy man. But stop, tell me your name, will you? Elijah. Elijah, thought I, and we walked away, both commenting after each other's fashion upon this ragged old sailor, and agreed that he was nothing but a humbug trying to be a bugbear. 
but we had not gone perhaps above a hundred yards when chancing to turn a corner, and looking back as I did so, who should be seen but Elijah following us, though at a distance. Somehow the sight of him struck me so that I said nothing to Queequeg of his being behind, but passed on with my comrade, anxious to see whether the stranger would turn the same corner that we did. He did. And then it seemed to me that he was dogging us, but with what intent I could not for the life of me imagine. This circumstance, coupled with his ambiguous, half-hinting, half-revealing, shrouded sort of talk, now begat in me all kinds of vague wonderments and half-apprehensions, and all connected with the Pequod, and Captain Ahab, and the leg he had lost, and the Cape Horn fit, and the silver calabash, and what Captain Peleg had said of him when I left the ship the day previous, and the prediction of the Squatistig, and the voyage we had bound ourselves to sail, and a hundred other shadowy things. I was resolved to satisfy myself whether this ragged Elijah was really dogging us or not, and with that intent crossed the way with Queequeg, and on that side of it retraced our steps. But Elijah passed on without seeming to notice us. This relieved me, and once more, and finally, as it seemed to me, I pronounced him in my heart a humbug. End of chapter 19